Hello there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and today I'm going to share you an amazing free history resource. You can't miss this. Stay tuned. So this is the Christian History Magazine. This is from 1995. This is my only physical copy I have of this. Now, what I'm going to share t with you today is more for your older kids. Like, a lot of us have um, teens that we really need to um, help them to understand that history is more than just, you know, some dates and, you know, just a few wars or whatever. Uh, we need to enthuse them about history and understand that God has not been silent. You know, after Jesus died and rose again and from the early church, you know, God has been talking to us and working in our lives. And um, it's just amazing. The Christian History, I believe um, it's an organization, it's a nonprofit. They actually go through history and they, they put it in a biblical perspective, which I really love. This one right here is about camp meetings and circuit riders, and I really love this one. I have actually used this as research for you know, the vintage um, readers that we're using. This helped me to understand how they came about and what was happening in our country when they came about. So I love this. Now, I know that um, sometimes, especially teens, they kind of start losing interest in a lot of things because they would just want to move on with their lives. And totally understandable, but we want to make sure as they are growing up and out from us that they also learn to be lifelong learners and learn to be lifelong learners. Um, <laughs> anyway, so what, what we want to do is introduce them to the type of history and interesting things that will that will be enthusing to them their whole lives. You know, you pick up a magazine article, you're interested in it because it, it's interesting to you and you'll read the whole thing, not because it's required and you will ha not have a test afterwards. <laughs> you do it because you want to, right? Because you're interested in it. This is G.K. Chesterton. Here are the Amish. Um, this is Gnostics. And this one is a great one to start young people out with is J.R.R. Tolkien. And um, this is this magazine but I got it for free online on the very site. It's not bootlegged or anything. And um, Christian History Magazine offers these magazines for free download. Now this is the text only version. You can also get the colorful version of this one. But um, this is one that I started my girls, my girl, I'm, I have one girl right now that really liked it. And you know, if you if you have kids that have read The Lord of the Rings, watch the movie, whatever, um, when you delve deeply into Jared Tolkien's life, I mean, it just really, really is interesting, the thoughts behind what he did, how he wrote. Here's a timeline of his life, which is very interesting. Um, there's just all kinds of articles, the Christian humanists, and it talks about not just the person, but the factors at the time that influenced different things. And it's just, um, this is very, very interesting. So you can see that she's highlighted it all through, wrote a wonderful essay on it. And, um, and then, so, you know, there's all kinds of titles. And let me show you the website so you'll know that, I mean, it, it's just amazing. And if you wanted to read this yourself or read it aloud to maybe some younger kids and you can like, you know, um, do a, a full blown, you know, um, binge study on the whole thing. And there's another thing you can do with that. Well, anyway, let me, let me share the website. So here we are at the Christian History Institute, see, uh, the website. And so um, what we have here is we have, this is the homepage. And if you go to the magazine, you find that there, the, the, current, the current one is Divine Healing. So you can buy it as a physical one. Um, you can donate to the organization, which is really recommended. This is an excellent organization. Um, you can subscribe. Um, down here are the, and then there are back issues. Let's see, where do I find back issues? There we go. Back issues. That's where you want to go. Um, and here we go. Here we go. All the way down. I have 2020, 2019, 2018, and on like that. Um, all the way back to 1982. Uh, this is Zinzendorf and the Moravians. So that would be an interesting story, um, study, wouldn't it? Okay, John Wesley, uh, John Wycliffe. Here's John Wesley. Here's John Wycliffe. And um, if I opened this one right here, then I would be shown this. So this has a PDF that you can download, which it just goes to the PDF page, of course. 
And in this one, it's text only, which is easier on your printer, right? <laughs> if you wanted to print this out. Um, and it's just filled with all kinds of stuff. However, also, as you can see, let's see if I can go back. Come on. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize. Let me go this way. Just a second. Okay. As you can see, there, you can also do this full screen and you can read it. Like if you have a tablet or whatever, you can read the actual magazine online. Wycliffe's England, A Time of Turmoil. Um, here we go. And it's just so amazing. Look at these. Look at these. Um, illustrations, right? Uh, the Dawn of the Reformation. This is just fascinating stuff. Defenders, friends, and foes. I mean, actually a child, I'm going to say about 10 or 11, probably could really get a lot out of these magazines. Just look at that. Isn't it amazing? And, you know, you could read it aloud. Y'all could, you know, everybody could understand at their own level. Oh, it's taking a while. Okay, let's go back. And, um, you know, you could do notebooking on each different part of it. This one, of course, let's see. We have Jonathan Edwards, C.S. Lewis, Baptists, interesting. Radical Reformation, the Anabaptists. There you go. That'd be your, you know, the Amish uh, roots there. John Calvin, full color reprint. John Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress. Pietism, a much maligned movement re-examined. Re so it's really kind of interesting. Um, it even gets into science. In, um, let's see, let me show you. William Tyndale, Charles Grandison fin Finney. There's um, money in Christian history. Whoa, that's interesting, isn't it? The millennium of Russian Christianity. Wow, we could really be interested in that right now, couldn't we? Women in the early church. That would be interesting. Um, Bernard of Clairvaux. Spiritual Awakenings in North America, fun, Waldensians. Oh, I want to know about that one. I'm going to get that one next. Um, so a lot of these early ones, you'll find that um, when you go to do the PDF, they're probably going to be in text only and not with illustrations. I don't know my internet slow. Okay. Oh, no, this one is. Okay. So this one you'd have to print out and, you know, you might use a little bit of ink. But... Um, but it'd be very nice, you know, very nice. So anyway, so this is just the coolest stuff. And um, let's see if I can, oh, here, I'm doing the wrong thing again. Ha ha. Okay, so let me show you. Um, if I go back from here, uh, there's some that I wanted to show you that had like had to do with Christianity and, his, and um, science. Let's see, persecution in the early church. Charles Spurgeon, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, with the question of war, and, you know, he, he was, this guy was uh, administered during the Nazi occupation of Germany. So, World War II. Very interesting individual. This would be very interesting to read. Let's see, 91, 92. And, you know, here we have George Whitfield, Worship in the Early Church, the Crusades. Boy, wouldn't that be fun, the Crusades. Um, so there's just so much, so much. Um, I just really heartily recommend this as a, as a resource for you. And like I said, it's free totally free and it's so excellent you can hardly believe that it would be free it might be good like to order you know I, let's see does it give you the, the opportunity to order back yeah oh it says donate i don't know if you can order back issues i think you kind of have to have to read them online or you know put them, oh christian Hin history magazine number 110 work and vocate no you can order the back issues have fun right and have a physical copy um Anyway, just, just a great organization, something that you can really use with your kids. Totally free, absolutely free, but you won't find this excellency in a lot of places. And this can really enthuse kids about history where like a regular old book might not. And you can also use it for unit studies. So I hope you take advantage of it. I will have links below for this wonderful resource. So now I would like to give you something more. <laughs> okay, in 2 Corinthians 10.5, we have this verse. And this is, I'm going to read you the New American Standard Bible first, and then we'll read the Amplified. It says, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. In the Amplified, it says, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking captive every thought and purpose captive to the, to the obedience of Christ. I hope I wrote that down right. Okay, so basically the idea is 
uh, God wanted to show me that sometimes in my mind, I was allowing speculations to have root. And I was, I was, I was, um, I guess, entertaining them. And so they were taking, like, if I thought about, like, the future, I would think, like, worst case scenarios and stuff like that. Okay, and that's not what God wants me to do. Okay, so a speculation is a theory or conjecture without firm evidence. I don't know about you, but I do daydream a little bit here and there. And our daydreams, our imaginations can be very effective in what kind of faith we have. And then our faith then is, an, is it, you know, has an effect on the outcome of our lives, right? So it's important to take every thought captive. Okay, conjecture is another idea for speculation. Conjecture is an opinion or judgment based on inconclusive or incom incomplete evidence, okay, guesswork. So we're guessing about the future. We're saying, well, you know, if the economy does this, then this will happen, and then they will, we will do this, and then they will do that. We don't really have any idea, right? We don't know what God has in the future. We might be actually creating that future by putting our faith that way, right? So we've got to take that every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So daydreams, scenarios, imaginations in the negative are speculations, right? They are imaginations and need to be made captive to the obedience of Christ. And we need to apply heavenly thinking instead of our human creature thinking, right? This is what God says to us. God says to us, who do you need me to be to you in this situation? That's what he says. He doesn't say, well, you know, it's just going to be bad and you're just going to have to suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> and, you know, <clears throat> he wants to be for us. You know, he, we have the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Does that sound like a God who's like saying, suck it up, buttercup. It's going to be bad. No, he's going to say, well, no matter what you go through, I will hold your hand. Father, I need you to be my shield. I need you to be my counselor. I need you to be my wisdom. I need you to be my keeper. I need you to be my provider. I need you to be love in your patience and kindness and gentleness with joy and self-control. And see, if we can keep our mind, our speculations, if we can keep them in the kingdom, like, well, you know what? If they do this, Lord, I know you'll have an answer for me. I know that no matter what happens to me, you will keep us and just imagine the wonderful things that God is going to do in your life and in the lives of those you love and the lives of those around you through what is going to happen. Because we know that even in the worst of times in this world, I think of World War II, that even though horrible things happen to really good people, the outcome was more blessing and more power in the Lord in so many situations. I'm thinking about... Um, the book Evidence Not Seen, and also uh, the story of Corey Ten Boom and different things like that. You know, God is doing his, doesn't matter what the, what the devil's trying to do. God is going to have his way. <laughs> and no matter what they say, you know, they're going to kill us all and they're going to, you know, take away part of our brain so we can't pray and all that kind of boo-hoo. Um, the Bible says that God sits in the heavens and laughs. And so if we're on his side... And we are seated with Christ and God in heavenly places. We can look on all this and we can see it for what it really is. That what Jesus said about the kingdom, that it's, it's nothing can stop what's going to happen. You know? Nothing. doesn't matter what the devil does. doesn't matter what people try to do. God's purpose is he's going to have Jesus rule and reign. And God's kingdom is going to totally manifest itself here on earth. And there's nothing they can do about it. And so that gives me so much hope. And I hope it does you today, too. So I'm going to say goodbye. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>